Hi everyone, welcome to or back to my channel. I'm Sally and this is my channel Secret Life of a Seamstress where I love to talk all about sewing and making clothes. Thank you for joining me today and I hope you're all doing really well. So you are joining me on a sewing week this week and this week I'm going to be sewing up this lovely pattern which is the Sew Over It 1940s tea dress. So I recently, or quite a long while ago now actually, put out a video talking all about some patterns I had in my pattern stash that I'd never got around to sewing up and I asked you to vote for the pattern that you'd most like to see me sew. And this was the one that actually won that vote. And I'm kind of glad really because I've wanted to sew this pattern for a while but it's one of those patterns that I kept putting off because it is quite a fitted dress and I knew there would probably be a little bit of fitting that I needed to do along the way and also it does have one of my worst sewing things included which is a very long invisible zip so by voting for this pattern you've actually pushed me to get on with it which is a really good thing so let me show you the line drawings of this pattern it's a really lovely vintage inspired dress by sew over it it's one of their older patterns I love this sort of era of sew over it and I love the fact that I've got this vintage illustration pattern as well this is what the dress looks like it has a v-neck a gathered bust a fitted waist panel and then it kind of flares out over your hips into a straight panelled skirt so yeah it's probably more of a fitted dress than I am used to sewing but I really like the style of it and I think it will look lovely with a few updates to it just to bring it a little bit more up to date I guess. So what I'm planning to do with this dress is actually sew the bodice as it is but I'm going to shorten the sleeves. The sleeves are actually quite long on this dress and they are turned up above the elbow. I'm just going to sew some straight short sleeves and I think that will feel a little bit more like me. And then with the skirt I'm going to actually lengthen the skirt so it comes down to around midi length and then I would like to have a split in the skirt as well and I think that's going to be quite easy to do with this style of dress because the skirt is actually sewn in two different panels anyway and I think that will make the dress look a little bit more modern but still have that sort of nod to vintage style. So in terms of the sizing for this pattern I am between two sizes, I'm between an 8 and a 10 so for the bust I'm a size 8 which is a 30 32. For the waist I'm a size 10 and for the hip I'm back to a size 8 again so there's a little bit of in and out to do with the fitting. So what I think I'm going to do is because there are lots of different parts to this pattern I'm hoping I'm going to be able to get away with tracing out the bust parts and just grading down to the waist at the bottom and then cutting a size 10 for the waist piece and then starting at the top of the skirt pieces at a size 10 and then grading back into a size 8 over the hips and I really hope that that will work. <laughs> there is a little bit of fitting that we can do or a little bit of alteration that we can do along the way with this dress because of the panels because there is a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance so if I do need to take in or let anything out I can probably play around with the seam allowances to do that as well. So the lovely fabric that I have for this dress is this viscose fabric. I got this from Sew Me Sunshine quite a long time ago now and it's such a pretty fabric but if you can see the colours in this ditzy floral print they're orange and yellow and pink. So what I'm going to spend some time doing today is actually getting the pattern out, having a look at it. I'm going to try and trace off all of the pattern pieces with that grading included and then I'm going to have a look at what I think of the pattern pieces and whether or not I think I'm gonna make a 12. So let's get tracing and I'll catch up with you along the way. So I decided to trace my pattern pieces as far as I could and as I mentioned I'm just grading from the bottom of the bust pieces from a size 8 to a size I also wanted to lengthen the skirt and as I was coming to trace the pattern pieces for the skirt I realised they were going to be quite wide and that lengthening the skirt was going to make the skirt really wide so I decided to try and take out some of the width of the panels. This did confuse me somewhat and I spent quite a lot of time thinking about how I was going to do this because the panels are curved and they also fit together in a certain way so I just had to make sure that I was lengthening the right pieces. It's all done now and I really hope that I I have done this right. Maybe just a better kind of better. Who's gravity? I'm swimming in the quicksand. Up to my knees. Keep loose and sleep. I'm 
now I'm going to just cut into my fabric. I have decided to cut straight into my fabric. Please don't judge me. I just don't feel like making a full twirl of this before I come to make my final version. As I said before, I do think that there is room for maneuver in terms of the panels and being able to take in more and let out where I need to. And also with the darts as well. So I'm just hoping that cutting straight into the fabric is going to work as well. This is a little bit of a scary project. So I hope you'll enjoy coming along with me. day now and I'm all set up and ready to sew. I am really excited to have a sewing day today. It feels like it's been a while since I've just sat down and sewn something. I think it was well before I went on holiday which is about six weeks I think. My washing machine was on earlier this morning and I couldn't, it's a little bit too noisy to sit down and talk to you. So I got on with a bit of the preparation work and I'll just show you where I am so far. I haven't done a lot. So I've sewn the front panels and that's what the front of the dress looks like. So you have the center panel and then the two side panels. This is a busy fabric, so I'll show you the back. So that's where it's joined like that. And then the pattern says to overlock the top edge of that panel. So that will sit around there like that. And then for the bust pieces, I've just done a bit of preparation work there. So we just needed to stay stitch the V-neck here so that it doesn't stretch out of place. This neckline is actually finished with a facing towards the end of the dress. So we just need to make sure that doesn't stretch out and overlock the bottom of the bust panel and then just run a few gathering stitches along the bottom of the curved bust piece. And then we will gather that piece up and then it will sit inside this panel. Right, so I'm gonna get on and sew this bust panel and then I will show you what it looks like when that's done. Just before I get into sewing the next parts of my dress, I just wanted to share something with you that I thought would be really interesting. So the lovely Josephine over at Plow and Patterns has recently launched a new online course called Better Fit Academy. So obviously in today's video with the dress I'm sewing I've talked a little bit about fitting and the various fit struggles and fit difficulties that I might come across along the way with this. And I recently did a little questionnaire over on my YouTube community and asked what kind of struggles and things we find along the way in our sewing journey. And fitting was one that came up quite highly. I know the fitting and choosing my size and all that kind of stuff was something that I really struggled with at the beginning of my sewing journey. And to be honest, I still struggle with it now, especially where trousers and pants are concerned. So the Academy course itself is really thorough. At the beginning of the course, Josephine goes into detail about the better fit method. And in this introduction, she just talks about the difference between your own body measurements and the finished garment measurements and the amount of ease that there is in a sewing pattern. So there are around 10 sections to this course. And she really goes into detail about bodice fitting. So there are bust adjustment classes in there, like full bust adjustments, small bust adjustments, and back and chest measurements and things like that. She also shares how to make a twirl. So something that she talks about quite a lot is how to make a paper twirl, which I think is really good and really interesting. And I also think it's probably less work maybe and definitely less waste than trying to sew a fabric twirl all the time. So I'm really interested in that part. So along with bodice adjustments, there's also a section on trousers and pants. So I'm gonna be very interested in that section and learning a bit more about how to fit pants properly. She also has a whole section on knit fabrics as well. So you're understanding the difference between your own body measurements and the negative ease that a pattern might require if you are using a knit fabric. Josephine is really lovely. Her teaching style is really gentle. She's not pushy at all. And I know that she's always around to answer any questions or queries that you might have along the way, which is always really helpful, I think. So I'll leave the links to the Better Fit Academy in the description below this video. So if you think it's something that might be useful to you, you can pop over, just have a look, see what it's all about and see if it might be something that's helpful to you. Josephine's actually offering my viewers a 20% discount. If you do decide to purchase the course, 
you just need to use my code Sally and you'll be entitled to 20% off. If you want a little taster, if you're not quite ready to sign up yet, then Josephine also has a free masterclass which you can watch just by entering your email details. So this is a really good little taster session and you'll still learn a lot and get loads of value out of this free masterclass as well. So I'm going to be working my way through this course and dipping in and out of the sections that I need help with along the way. So I'll look forward to sharing with you how I get on with this. Okay, so the bust panel and pieces are all in. It's a little bit tricky to make sure that you're getting that V point lined up on the bust pieces. So you've got the V point here, um, and it was really tricky actually to just get that to meet in a nice neat point. So I did have to undo what I'd originally done and then go back and do it again and just try and get it a little bit neater. So next we are on to um, the side back and center back pieces. So one thing I would say about this pattern, if you are planning to sew it, is keep your pattern pieces on your fabric because it is quite hard to determine which panel sizes go with what and which way round they go, so where the top is and where the bottom is. So I have tried to keep all of my pattern pieces on top of the fabric so that I know where to pin and sew. Beyond the ghost, we stand on the opposite shore. Hello, Ramona. I reach through mysterious ceilings, my holy home. Next we're on to the bodice, shoulder and side seam. So I decided to base those together before sewing properly, just so that I could try the bodice on and see what I thought about the fit. After that try on I think I am happy with the fit so far. It's obviously a little bit difficult to tell because I haven't got the zip in and that's going to take some of the width out of the back but what I did was try it on back to front and then try to sort of overlap the centre back seam to the seam allowance that will be taken with the zip and just see if that felt okay and I think it did so hopefully we are okay. So the bodice is pretty much done, well not done but you know done. <laughs> it looks kind of like a bodice. I love this fabric so much. I think because of the vintage style of this, the V is quite narrow and the, um, the neck comes quite high on the back as well. So yes, we're going to have to see how that goes as we go along. So next we're on to the skirt panel. So I need to sew the um, darts in the back of the back of the skirt and then we need to put the two front panels together and sew those. So while I'm going through those bits I just need to think about the split that I want to leave in the skirt as well. So the back of the skirt is obviously in two parts as well because we've got that super long zip that we need to put in at the back. So we'll do the darts now and then see what we're on to next. Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know We're all in this I stand alone Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know few things have 
happened since I last spoke. <laughs> so I have all of the skirt panels in now. So what I did about the split was I I'm denied about whether or not this actually needs a split. I said that I'd taken some of the width of the panels out of the skirt pieces, but I'm still not sure if it's going to be that fitted. So I'm wondering if actually a split is going to be necessary. Obviously, if the skirt is still quite full once the dress is sewn, then a split is just not going to be visible, is it, when you're wearing it? So what I've done is I've sewn one of the front panel pieces, let me show you on the pattern. So on this side of the panel, I've sewn the seams fully together and overlocked them. And then on this side, I've actually overlocked each raw edge and then sewed it and pressed the seams open so that once the dress is finished, if I do decide I want a split, I can then go back into the seam and just open it and have that split. So yeah, that's my plan. <laughs> After a little bit of lunch and a quick break, I decided to get straight back on with this dress because I really want to get as much of this done today as I can. So I was actually wrong, it's not the zip necks, it's the sleeves. So I'm going to put them in now. So my sleeves are slightly shorter than the sleeves that the dress um, pattern includes and the pattern actually includes a sleeve facing as well, which I'm not doing. So I'm just gonna sew my sleeves as normal and get them in as quickly as I can. <music> Sleeves are done now. They are some of the probably most difficult sleeves I've ever had to put in actually. There is so much sleeve head to put into the armhole. There was just so much gather that I couldn't get to lie flat and it was really difficult. So if you do find that with sleeve head, something that I've learned along the way is if you kind of maneuver the fabric with your fingers as you go and sort of do this with it. It eventually will go in, but it did take a while even with me doing that. So you're kind of easing the fabric with your fingers and almost sort of smoothing it out. And also pin it as if you are pinning it on a shoulder. Anyway, it's done now. And another little tip actually is if you find that the machine is gathering up again under the foot, just sort of slightly wiggle your machine foot so that you're going like this with the gathers and it kind of smooths them out a little bit underneath the foot so yeah they were tricky so now unfortunately the time has actually come for this thing <laughs> so the dress is completely open at the moment so i need to get this zip in first and then you join the bottom of the hem i feel like i'm sounding a little bit croaky <laughs> i think it's just because i'm getting to that point of the day where um I've been going quite a while, but I really want to get this zip in just so that I can see the fit. And actually after the zip, it's only the facing and the hem, so not too much further to go. some miracle that actually went in not too bad I'm so pleased it was much quicker than I thought it was going to be and it opens fully and it does up pretty invisibly as well so I am pleased with that so what I need to do now is put the facing in the facing is actually in two pieces so I need to join this together and then an overlock around the edges and then that should just slot into the neck band nicely so that should give a nice neat finish to the neckline <laughs> Hi 
Hi everyone, it's a few days later now and I tried the dress on. I think the last time I left the video I was just finishing the dress pretty much and trying it on. And I've left the dress to hang for a couple of days just in case there was anything that needed to drop. You know how sometimes skirts on viscose fabrics can drop if you um, hem them straight away. So I left that for a couple of days. Luckily, it looks as though there hasn't been a lot of drop in. The hem actually looks pretty even, so I'm pleased about that. And I think that's maybe because of the different panels that there are in this dress. So I will talk about the dress properly at the end of the video, but I have to say that when I tried this on, the fit of it is actually quite surprising and I will show you why at the end of the video. So this morning, I'm just gonna spend some time hemming this and um, pretty much it. So let me get on with this now and I will share the finished result at the end of the video. So I'm back and I'm wearing the dress to just show you how it fits. So I am happy with this dress. I really like it. I think it's got a lovely sort of nod to vintage style in it. It hasn't turned out quite how I was expecting in terms of um, the fact that I wanted it to have the split in it and everything. I think the skirt is a little bit more floaty and full than I was imagining or what, than what I had in my head. So you'll notice that I left out the split in the end and didn't bother to do that. What I would say about the fitting is that I did all of that grading and there's still quite a lot of room around the bust and the waist, um, which is fine because I prefer a more oversized dress like this anyway, really. But I think that's my own fault, really, in terms of the fact that I didn't make a twirl. I thought I needed to let it out of the waist, but actually there's plenty of room in there. I don't know how that's happened because in the finished garment measurements of the pattern, it does say that the waist doesn't have any ease in it. So my waist measurement of 27 inches should have been exact. And that was obviously the reason why I graded to a size 10. I could have quite easily got away with just sewing a straight size eight in this pattern because there is so much room in it. So if you are going to be sewing this dress, then just keep that in mind, perhaps. So overall, I am really pleased with this dress. I love it. I think it's gonna work really well going from sort of late summer into autumn. And you'll see in the photos that I'm gonna put in that I've just styled it with some boots and things. And I think it will look nice with a jacket. But I also think it's gonna work really nicely in summertime, just with sandals and sort of light um, trainers. And I absolutely love this fabric. It's such a pretty print and it has all of my favorite colors in like I said it's got the oranges and the pinks and the lemons so I just feel really happy wearing this dress it came together really nicely and actually pretty quickly and it's quite satisfying to do all of those panels I feel like this dress looks really nice from the inside because you can see all the panels and how they're sewn together and it just looks really neat and satisfying and against this fabric the overlocking thread looks quite dark so you can really see the shape and the outline of the dress so yeah thank you so much for voting for this pattern and making me finally get it out and sew it up. I'm so pleased that I gave it a go. It was really nice to go back to a sew over it pattern because I haven't sewn one in quite some time. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I really hope you've enjoyed another sewing week in my life. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel I'd love you to consider doing so and if you have enjoyed the video please do give it a like as well. Otherwise take care and I'll look forward to seeing you in another video soon. Bye!